I know, I know, you're thinking, Stephen, what the hell is with the title of this video today, man? Come on, please, what's going on? Well, I can absolutely assure you these were not the last words spoken to me by your girlfriend. In truth, there's just way too much shit to fit in today's video title. Let's run down the list. New proof that Tesla is a low-key assassin, already within spitting distance of becoming one of the world's 10 largest automotive manufacturers by revenue. And that's before any meaningful volume from Austin or Berlin. We'll go through a bunch of near-term catalysts for Tesla stock that one bull believes will send Tesla stock to $550 per share in the next six to 12 months. A couple of super juicy updates on Starlink. And uh, for the record, I was wrong again. And a sketchy bottom feeding Tesla hater has been caught red handed attempting to pay people to spread lies about Tesla. Told you it wouldn't fit. So let's get into it. And before we get into it, if you want to instantly unlock over 100 exclusive videos, plus my 10 year Tesla stock price targets and loads of other perks, including optional access to my Tesla valuation model, join our growing community of thousands of supporters on Patreon with the link in the pinned comment. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment themed merch in the merch store. First, Proof that Tesla is a low-key assassin sneaking up on the top 10 global automotive manufacturers by revenue. Juicy chart from none other than James Stevenson. So what we're looking at here, the world's largest automotive manufacturers by revenue. As we can see, Toyota out in the lead, just sneaking past Volkswagen, a little under one quarter of a trillion dollars. Here's a fact, it hasn't happened yet, but it's a fact and that's why I'm saying it's a fact now so when it plays out I can say I knew that was gonna happen. We are looking at peak annual revenue for Toyota and Volkswagen. I don't believe either of these companies will ever achieve higher annual revenue on automotive sales than these figures. Why? Collapsing ice sales, struggles to ramp up EV volume, Tesla eating their lunch. We see slotting in the number three spot, Stellantis, for those who don't know, a merger of multiple previous companies almost cheating their way to top three, not taking anything away from the company, but when you conglomerate a bunch of independent automotive manufacturers, clearly the total revenue for this new conglomerate is gonna be higher than any of those companies were individually. Number four, Ford, at about half Toyota and Volkswagen's annual revenue, then Mercedes, then Government Motors, just over 100 billion, BMW, just over 100 billion, and now we get to the sub $100 billion club, Hyundai, almost 100 billion, Honda, 75 billion, Nissan, 69.2 billion, nice, Kia, under 60 billion, Renault under 55 billion and Tesla almost 50 billion dollars of revenue in 2021. Of major note, year over year growth and or declines on the rightmost column here. I've highlighted a few in red. We can actually see that Honda saw negative year over year revenue growth. So too Nissan, so too Volvo, so too Mazda and so too Subaru. There's one enormous outlier on this list and that of course would be Tesla with 74% year over year growth in revenues. Top 20 combined automotive manufacturers by revenue in 2020 doing about 1.6 trillion in revenue, 2021 about 1.7 trillion. Big market. Of course, the point of investing, the reason I own Tesla stock isn't because of past performance, but future growth. My current Tesla price targets produced by my Tesla valuation model, my base case assumes that in 2022 for the full year, Tesla comes in around 69 billion dollars of revenue. Keeping in mind that most of the other companies on this list are seeing their revenues fairly flat, maybe up a few percent in the best case, down a few percent in the worst case. I think it's safe to say most companies will sit on a similar position in this list at the end of 2022 as they do at the end of 2021, except of course, Tesla. It seems likely Tesla year over year is gonna jump from around 13th place to around 10th place. And in 2024, please keep me accountable. I believe Tesla will take out the seventh spot. Now there's a few things to be mindful of here. My thesis is not only based around Tesla's insane growth, but also declining sales, collapsing sales of ICE vehicles from legacy automotive manufacturers. In other words, basically everyone that isn't Tesla has a massive, massive headwind, and Tesla has a massive, massive tailwind. By 2024, full year, I expect Tesla will reach the top three, seriously. This is all from my base case valuation model for Tesla. If you'd like access, you can join Patreon at the investor support level and above to see all of these assumptions. In what year will Tesla become the world's largest automotive company by revenue? Again, using the term automotive company fairly loosely. According to my valuation model, 2025. This assumes some declines in total revenue from some of the big boys as their sales of ICE vehicles continue to collapse and they struggle to ramp EVs to volume, but mostly on the back of Tesla's insane growth. Let me just repeat that. It's 2022 now. As of the end of last year, Tesla was in 13th place. And I believe by the end of 2025, that's three years from now, Tesla leaps from number 13 to number one, and they'll still just be getting started. Now a few catalysts for Tesla stock from none other than Gary Black, who you should all be following on Twitter. 
Just want to chime in here too. Gary cops a lot of flack from deluded Tesla fanboys. Like a lot. Like I mean the cult-like, religious, like actual Elon D riders. You can't take any negative criticism, any feedback, or any contrarian thoughts. Yet Gary still maintains his composure. Why? Because he's a man, not an emotional infant. Most people get butthurt with the amount of criticism flung their way. Sorry, most undeveloped people, that is. So respect to Gary for continuing to tell it like it is, despite all the crybabies in the comments. Doesn't mean I agree with everything Gary says, in fact, far from it. I respect the fact that Gary has the emotional composure and control, the maturity, as an adult human being, to continue speaking his mind despite some of the trolls. Most people couldn't handle it. Tesla catalysts. Twitter overhang lifts in October. This is likely to be a meaningful short-term catalyst. Wall Street hates uncertainty. Which is kind of strange given the fact that with uncertainty comes opportunity, but hey, Wall Street's gone to Wall Street. Tesla Q3 delivery volumes in October. Three, Gary Black also expecting an S&P credit upgrade for Tesla in October. Yes, those three catalysts next month. Notice the conspicuous absence of Tesla's AI Day 2 on this list of catalysts. Why? <laughs> I suspect Gary recognizes that Wall Street, the mainstream finance media, is probably not going to react positively to what's going to be a stunningly bullish event because they just don't get it. The fourth catalyst for Tesla stock over the near term, new gigafactories announced in the UK. And I won't be surprised if this does play out. Seems like a logical location for the next giga. And another in eastern United States. This is something Tesla's already flagged is in their roadmap. Gary expecting that in Q4. Catalyst number five, a $10 billion share buyback announced from Tesla in December. Tesla hasn't told us they are going to do this, but Elon has hinted at the possibility that in the future, Tesla would be open to share buybacks. And I mean, what the f else are they gonna do with their money? They're already moving as fast as they possibly can. The sixth catalyst, FSD beta release. Gary expecting this to take place next quarter. Number seven, Cybertruck launch in mid 2023. Assuming things are on track. Worst case, probably second half of the year. And the eighth catalyst from Gary Black here, $30,000 EV launch in mid 2024. Timing wise, I think this is about on the mark. Gary Black reiterating his $550 price target over the next six to 12 months. A little bit of additional context from Gary. My Tesla stock price target of $550 is unchanged. It assumes a 2026 PE of 40 times on 2026 EPS of $20.80. I'm discounted back, you guys can read all the nuance. An interesting note here. Gary says, I assume others figure out what I know within six to 12 months, hence the six to 12 month price target. And it's important to understand this. Generally speaking with price targets, it's part art, part science. Gary's assumption here is that everyone else will wake up and realize the numbers here, which we'll go through in a moment, are gonna happen. And when they do realize these numbers will happen, Tesla stock to $550 per share. I take a slightly different approach. My Tesla stock price targets aren't a prediction of when the stock market will figure out what I already know. Because honestly, I don't think the stock market's really gonna get caught up on Tesla anytime this decade. They're always gonna be years behind. Never seen a company move as fast as Tesla. Everyone's reasoning by analogy. They just can't see what's before their very eyes. Massive lack of imagination. So my Tesla stock price targets are what I believe Tesla stock should be worth if the market knew what the f was up, which it doesn't and won't, at a certain point in the future based on the assumptions attached to those price targets in my valuation model. Important distinction, the long story short, I don't expect Tesla is regularly going to be at my price target. I'm not predicting what Tesla stock's going to be worth, but rather what it should be worth based on XYZ assumptions. Important distinction, taking a closer look at Gary Black's assumptions here, a few key points of note. Second column here, EV adoption, percent of all new vehicles sold being electric. Most of the so-called experts would say that Gary's estimates are extremely bullish, in fact, boring on delusion, but I would actually say the opposite. Gary Black has 60% EV adoption by 2030. I think that's gonna be massively under. However, there is a caveat there, massive material constraints, supply constraints, that's the big bottleneck. But this is key to Gary's assumption. How quickly does the EV market grow and what percent of that market does Tesla capture? Fourth column, Gary assuming over the long term, Tesla maintaining approximately a 20% global market share of new EV sales. By 2030, Gary expecting Tesla to deliver 10.8 million electric vehicles, about half their publicly stated goal. If you guys wanna nerd it out and pause, feel free. Some pretty decent automotive margins as well. And the rightmost two columns here, we also have Wall Street consensus estimates. For example, in 2030, Gary Black has Tesla doing 42, nice, dollars in EPS. Wall Street at $14.40. Wall Street also expecting Tesla to deliver just 7 million vehicles in 2030 versus their stated goal of 20 million and Gary's estimate of 10.8 million. I wonder who's gonna be closest to the mark, Tesla's own goals or the Wall Street consensus? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And now a couple of quick but very important Starlink updates. First, this tweet. I spoke with Elon Musk about Starlink in Iran. He gave me permission to share this, quote, Starlink is now activated in Iran. Talk about a quick response. 
It requires the use of terminals in country, which I suspect the government will not support. But if anyone can get terminals into Iran, they will work. Once again, mad respect to Elon and the team at Starlink, especially Elon Musk, for personally putting his gigantic nuts on the chopping block. In the span of less than six months, Elon has managed to piss off both Russia and now Iran, because he has a big heart. Speaking of Starlink, massive news from Elon. Quote, Starlink now over 1 million user terminals manufactured. This is fucking insane. And now I'd just like to take the opportunity to say something I don't get to say very often, so I'm gonna really make the most of it. I was wrong. I was wrong. One more time. I was wrong about what exactly Starlink terminals and how quickly they could start ramping up production. For those who don't know, which is practically everyone, I have a low key bonus in my test evaluation model. In the fully downloadable, editable version, I also include my Starlink valuation model bear case, base case, and bull case. Even my bull case, which funnily enough used the same figure as my base case for 2022 Starlink volume, was massively off the mark. I had 750,000 subscribers, which in essence is effectively the same as terminals produced. Now, if you want to be a point extra in the comments, don't bother. If you're talking about people with inactive services, the terminals have been donated to Ukraine and so on, they're rounding errors. Terminals produced is a more than adequate proxy for users subscribed to the service. I had 750,000 users subscribed to Starlink in my valuation model in the base case at the end of 2022. I assumed before I made this valuation model, Starlink could theoretically produce 1 million terminals by 2022 if production ramped flawlessly, which obviously in the real world ain't gonna happen. So I was wrong once again. I massively, massively underestimated how quickly another Musk company would scale. One more time, I was wrong. I love saying that, it's just such a rare luxury. As I disclosed on Twitter earlier today, just for the record, my Starlink valuation model base case, which I haven't updated, probably will, currently contains an estimate of 3.37 million users at the end of 2023 and over 15 million users by the end of 2024. I do not think people are understanding the insane scale and potential of Starlink. Look forward a couple of decades into the future. Think about the number of households today on earth that do not have any access to reliable broadband internet. The number of people living in those households combined is in the billions. So even if Starlink takes a very small slice of all households in the future with broadband internet access, the market size is staggering. This is a literal money printer that will have more positive impact on the world than just about anything else. As we know, access to information allows isolated communities to lift themselves out of poverty. And before I move on, just wanna take this opportunity to once again say, because man, it feels good, and man, it doesn't happen very often. I was wrong, busted. This from Tasmanian, quote, Tesla and Elon Musk under attack by filmmaker who pays influencers to speak negatively about them. Elon's summing it up with a single word, charming. Let's read this article. Tesla and Elon Musk are under attack again, this time from an unscrupulous filmmaker who pays influencers to speak badly of them. Quote, the self-appointed czar battling against distracted driving recruits 75 to 100 employees who are paid $100 for a 10 to 15 minute video. Tesla and Elon Musk have been attacked by a filmmaker whose heinous activities were exposed thanks to the vigilance of one of Tesla Rati's readers. The person shared an email with the publication containing information about the planned film. The film is supposed to have a positive impact on people so they do not get distracted while driving. But instead of using facts, the organizer encouraged actors to speak badly about Tesla and Elon Musk in staged videos in order to deceive and confuse viewers. DestructiveDriving.com, Jordan Scott, who called himself, quote, Zar battling against distracted driving, is making a movie called Man vs. Musk. Isn't it interesting that Elon is always the person generating the clicks? The description of the project says that Tesla and its CEO are guilty of distracted driving. See, isn't it interesting? Always bringing the CEO into this. Why does this not happen with any other company on the planet? It's always just Elon Musk. It couldn't be personal, could it? Backed by Charlie Shulman, Scop aims to attract 75 to 100 social media influencers who will lie about Tesla and Musk, blaming them for the problem of distracted driving. Each participant will receive $100 for a 10 to 15 minute video, which they will also have to post on their social networks. Here's a quote. Casting, Man vs. Musk, a short film. Synopsis, Man vs. Musk is about Scop's role in combating distracted driving. Seeking 75 to 100 actors, keyword actors, with a strong social media presence and following to read and self-record a new 10 to 15 minute monologue. Do you guys understand how fucking disgusting this is? They're giving these dickheads a script. Hey dickhead, 
We'll give you $100 to read this script. It's a script to paint a false narrative. Paid actors. Production states, quote, it is co-written. Again, going back to the scripts. It is co-written by Scop, who definitely doesn't have his own agenda here. Leveraging Elon Musk's name, causing controversy, getting clicks. No. By Scop, an award-winning playwright, Charlie Shulman. The article continues. While it would seem that fighting distracted driving is a good intention, the dirty methods that have been chosen to do so are disgusting. Well said, Eva Fox. Instead of conducting real research and creating a quality film based on facts, the project chose lies and their wide dissemination to mislead the audience, inclining only to the subjective opinion of the organizers. Obviously, when it comes to fact checking, accusing Tesla and Musk will lose all meaning. Then it will be impossible to use the known name of the company and the name of its CEO, which means that the project will not receive the public attention desired by the organizers. It is the use of Tesla and Musk that highlight the likelihood of a desire for fame. Hit the nail on the fucking head. I didn't read this article before recording, but I mean, bro, I literally just said the exact same thing. This is cloud chasing. Use Elon's name. Man versus Musk. Again, why? Clicks. And the goal of combating distracted driving is perhaps only a deception. She hit the nail on the head. For example, in Q4 2021, Tesla recorded one crash for every 4.31 million miles driven in which drivers were using autopilot. For drivers who were not using autopilot, Tesla recorded one crash for every 1.59 million miles driven. By comparison, NHTSA's data shows that in the United States, there is an automobile crash every 484,000 miles. The results are clear. Unfortunately, they don't paint the click generating, revenue generating, fame generating narrative this bottom feeding filmmaker requires kind of reminds me of some of the haters i've still never watched solving the money problem is a fraud when you've got nothing useful to say yourself just level unwarranted claims at a company a person a personality or so on generate clicks because that's your only hope now i know a few of you will actually those of you exclusively living in your mum's basement might be thinking, Stephen, aren't you a gigantic hypocrite? Aren't you a clout chaser? Don't you make videos on Elon Musk and Tesla just to get clicks? And the answer to that question is obviously, of course, exactly. That's exactly what I'm doing. That's why I started making videos on Elon Musk and Tesla before anyone was clicking any because they didn't even exist. That's why I was trying to point out when Tesla stock was, what are we now, split adjusted about $20 per share. Seemed like an opportunity. I started making videos, banging the drum, explaining why I thought it was an opportunity, why I was all in on Tesla stock, what I thought would play out over the coming years. Why I've been ranting and raving about Tesla to everyone who'd listen and many who wouldn't for a decade. You're exactly right. I'm a clout chaser just like everyone else. In fact, my only goal is to maximize the number of people who listen to me. That's why I swear far too often. That's why I shit on religion at every opportunity I get. I can't believe you guys believe that shit seriously. And offend slash ostracize large portions of my audience. That's why I'm very open about my long-term love affair with Mary Jane. And my sole goal in this life is just to get as much attention as I possibly can, whatever it takes. That's why the titles of my videos always include do this now and then never actually tell you what to do. That's why when I saw an even shinier object than Tesla and Elon Musk, I immediately changed all the content on the channel to focus on that shiny object instead of continuing to talk about Elon Musk and Tesla. Please subscribe. I'm desperate for you to like me and or follow me and or listen to me. It's also why I completely refrain from sharing any of my views on any of the actions taken by anyone, especially in the United States political system at the moment. When they're fucking Tesla in the ass, I just stay quiet because I don't want to offend anybody who thinks I'm a raging orange man bad supporter. Not that I'm a tinfoil hat wearer. Not that I just want everybody's grandmother to die. I don't. That's why I tread so carefully on this channel because I care so much about you watching and not being offended because if you're offended, you might stop watching. And if you stop watching, I feel like I don't matter because the only way I matter is if people are listening to me and the only way people listen to me is if I'm telling them what I think they want to hear rather than what I actually believe. So let's quickly recap today's video. One, Tesla's killing it. Two, Tesla's killing it. Three, Tesla's killing it. Four, Starlink's killing it. Five, Elon Musk has gigantic balls. And six, I still give zero fucks. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed. Speaking of giving zero fucks and spitting facts and offending people and not caring, if you'd like to head over to Patreon and access 150 plus exclusive videos in which I spit facts and will probably offend you in at least one or two of them, click the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment to join. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I was definitely wrong with my Starlink estimates. Even in my more bullish scenarios, I massively underestimated how quickly this company is scaling. I'm an idiot. One more time, I'm an idiot. I was wrong. Man, I love to say that. A rare opportunity indeed. And just to be clear, if you'd like access to my Starlink valuation model, it's only available to Patreon supporters at the baller level and above with access to the downloadable, fully editable Tesla valuation model. So see you over on Patreon. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel and instantly unlock over 100 exclusive videos, plus my 10-year Tesla stock price targets and loads of other perks, including optional access to my Tesla valuation model, join our growing community of thousands of supporters on Patreon with the link in the pinned comment. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment themes merch in the merch store. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. Please let me know your thoughts on today's video in the comments below and click the card on screen now to watch the next video.